Good morning, everyone. Earlier this week, the Slow City Council discussed their budget for the next two years, and I want to spend my time this morning drawing your attention to a few of the elements that the Chamber is excited to be supporting. First, for the 2021-2023 fiscal years, the city has set goals of economic recovery, resiliency and fiscal sustainability, that's one, housing and homelessness, diversity, equity and inclusion, and then finally, climate action, open space and sustainable transportation. And these goals are going to guide investments of time and money in the coming years. The most significant change that we're going to see to our budget is nearly $24 million that will be coming every year from Measure G20. This was a sales tax measure that was passed by voters this November and took effect earlier this month on April 1st. It is a lot of money and we are continuing to advocate for the city to keep its scrappy, creative, resourceful mindset that it had with a more limited budget as they put these tax dollars to work. A great example of this philosophy and practice is their decision to spend the first quarter of Measure G uh, funds that are received this year on economic recovery and reopening efforts, as well as the city's commitment to increasing the percentage of revenues that are dedicated to infrastructure over the coming years. In the past, sales tax revenues were split about 70-30 between hard costs and operating expenses, and we are heartened to hear from staff and council that over the next few years, they are projected to increase the amount spent on capital and hard costs to 85% and 15% on operating expenses. This shift will let us build and maintain roads like the Prado Road overpass, finally break ground on long planned community improvements like the Mission Plaza Master Plan, and increase our ability to achieve environmental goals and protect open space. As I mentioned a few months ago, but I just want to reiterate, credit for these improvements should undoubtedly be given to city leaders, but I also think it's really important to highlight the people who endorse Measure G and work tirelessly to get it passed. There are so many people to thank, but I do want to give a couple of shout outs to our Chamber's initial task force members, Hillary Trout, Joe Benson, Dave Cox, Eric Justison, and Beth Marino. Campaign co-chairs, Jim Duffy, Kevin Harris, Donna Lewis, and Sandy Sigurdsson, and committee members, Jesse Bilston, Kim Bishop, Kelly Donahue, Chris Richardson, Dan Ravar, and Chip Vichy. I know it's sort of a list of names, but it's really amazing um, the time, energy, and support that all of these people stepped up to provide to make sure that our community's uh, financial future is secured for the in the coming years. Um, so the next time you see them in person, maybe, or even just a big Zoom meeting like this one, I really encourage you to consider sending them a quick note or saying thank you, um, because our future really would not be as bright as it is without them and their hard work. So as we're talking about budgets, what's coming forward, infrastructure investments, ways the different city money can be spent, I do recognize that you know budgets are one of the most powerful tools for building the future that we want to see, but that digging into them can be complicated and honestly really intimidating. So to try and make it more accessible, um, not only with budgets, but different ways that government affects our lives and the opportunities for businesses, we have launched a new event series called Cracking the Government Code. It's designed to give you tools to more quickly and easily shape the community you love and get involved, quite honestly, with less pain and mystery. So we invite you to join us for the first Thursday of the month, this May through September. And I promise that this is not going to be your high school civics course. It is going to deliver informative, interactive, fast paced sessions. Uh, we're gonna talk with subject matter experts like elected officials and staff, people who've really been in the trenches and are willing to share their knowledge and answer all of your questions. Uh, we're going to be talking about the basics of getting involved, decoding the language, procedures, and practices that you might encounter if this is your first time getting involved, or even if you've been doing it for a long time but are still uh, a little bit unsure of your footing. We're going to be talking about key differences between the state, county, and city governments, and really understanding that based on different issues, which of those levels of government has the most power to impact the change that you want to see going to obviously dig into finances, possibilities that budgets unlock, as well as limitations that exist. Um, going to be discussing the impact that our urban planning choices have on the economy, our community, and our environment. 
And finally, really digging into the way that, you know, quote unquote, normal residents, people who have families and jobs and full lives can get involved and shape their community um, while still, you know, sort of being true to themselves. So I've just shared a link to register in the chat right now, and I really hope that you'll consider joining us or reaching out if you have any questions. Um, we're going to be sort of piloting this this year, making changes as it goes along, and would love to get your input and help inspire you to become more involved in shaping your community. Thanks so much.